Today I'm gonna be doing a full homestead tour. I'm gonna be going through the orchard, the garden, the blueberry patch, and I'll show you the rest of the woods that we own. So starting off in the orchard here, first thing we have is our potato mound. So these potatoes are looking really healthy. The plants are starting to come up. They got through our first layer of straw that I had on here initially. Uh, so I went and got about five or six bags of leaves and dumped them all on here. And yesterday there was a huge soaking rain, so everything got a good drink. But yeah, these potatoes are looking really good. We should be getting a lot of them this year. So moving behind the potato mound and the hoop house here, we kind of have this empty area. We planted an apple tree here and it didn't, it didn't work out. Um, so it's kind of just been space out of that I don't really have a use for currently. So what I think I'm gonna do is um, start isolating some of the wild strawberries we have growing back here. So I mowed this area down because it was pretty overgrown. I managed to save a lot of strawberry plants here. So I mowed it down and I weeded a lot of these strawberry bushes. So I'm gonna be getting some wood chips up here in the, in the next couple days and really try to isolate these strawberry plants. And hopefully let them just expand and take over this whole area, this whole orchard even. So I'm, I'm in the hoop house now. This is where all of our peppers are and we have a couple eggplants at the end. This is all looking good. I had to figure out the drip tape a little bit, has some issues with the irrigation, but I got that figured out. I'm gonna get some more stuff planted uh, in the extra space here. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna put in here yet, but I think I'm gonna put some carrots, maybe some lettuce um, on the outer edge here of these beds because there's a lot of space to just have one pepper plant. I probably made these beds a little bit bigger than they needed to be. So I'm gonna try to utilize the extra space we have. Just north of the greenhouse, we have uh, this chipped area here. I planted a couple of Zestar apple trees that in their first year, it looks like they're putting on fruit. I have three currants up here, a couple Josta berries, and uh, my walking onion patch. I moved the onion bed down to my garden area earlier this year, and I planted all of my onion sets in that bed. Uh, so these are kind of just the leftover perennials. So the next stop on our tour here is our grape arbor. These are King of the North grapes. They're a couple years old and they're absolutely killing it. These things have grown so much in the past year and it's crazy how much fruit has set on these. I'm really looking forward to actually getting these harvested and eating it. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fruit coming off of these vines. I also planted a Concord grape this year. These ones are still small, so I'm going to have to build them an arbor in the next week or so. I'm going to be using the logs in our garden area that I got from processing the trees that we felled to clear space for our garden. I'm going to be using those to build uh, the next two grape arbors that I need to build here and our raspberry trellis. Speaking of which, onto the raspberry. These things are absolutely massive. They've just taken over this entire area and my plan right now is to build a trellis out of logs and just hang the canes over them and then once I harvest them this year, get rid of the canes that aren't gonna fruit again and hopefully get this whole thing cleaned up a little bit. Cause right now it's kind of a mess but they look like they're doing all right. They're definitely not having any issue growing. Gonna be getting a lot of fruit this year. Question for you guys. So we have this one tree. It's kind of just in the corner of our fenced area here. It was actually one that my brother planted like five, six years ago now. And I thought it was an apple tree this whole time, but these aren't apples, or at least I don't think they are. So if anyone knows what this is, please let me know in the comments. That'd be greatly appreciated. Our three honeyberry bushes that we have are doing really well. There was actually two that were ripe, or at least close to ripe, and I just had my first honeyberry. It was delicious. I'm glad we planted these. But I planted these honeyberries a couple years ago, and they were so small when I put them in the ground, and they have just exploded since then. They have a lot of fruit ready to go this year. But yeah, that was delicious. Wow, I've never had one before. So in the back corner of my orchard here, I have an Evans cherry tree, and this is doing really well too. Putting on a lot of fruit. I've never had a cherry off the tree before, so I'm excited. Gonna be getting a lot of different types of fruit this year. But mostly apples, so onto the apple trees. So we have 19 apple trees in here, and five or four of those were planted, they were real young, and I think maybe a couple more besides that aren't putting on fruit, but the rest of them are putting on a lot of fruit. So we're gonna be getting a lot of apples this year. I also planted six blueberry bushes in here. Um, I have a blueberry patch that I'm gonna be showing you later. I put 
or I got a, a shipment of 50 in the mail. I put 44 in the patch and it completely filled the patch. So I had six more left over and I put those other six kind of in the space we had in here in between the trees. So a lot of different types of fruit in this orchard and a lot of apple trees that are all looking really good. To give you an idea of the layout of everything here, I've got a honey crisp, honey gold, fireside, and a plum tree in the back. And there's blueberry bushes on the far side of all these trees. I have a couple apple trees here that I just planted. You can see the tags. Um, the next row here, I've got currants up front. These are a few years old and this bush is huge, so it should be getting a lot of fruit there. Uh, this is a plum tree that I just planted and then the rest or the other three trees are young apple trees. So this next row, I've got a viking berry and then these four trees are all apples. And then the next row is my grape arbor, the honey berries, the Macintosh apple, and another apple tree in the Evans cherry. And then in this patch here that doesn't have any grass, it was tarped before. Uh, so I put that tarp in the garden area. I'm, I'm gonna be showing you that next. But this is where I planted grapes, um, another plum tree, and another apple tree. And then that's the raspberry patch. So that's it for the orchard. I'll take it on to the garden area now. Um, but before I get there, I'll show you uh, our chicken plants. So there's an area in between the orchard and the garden here. Um, there's like a, our, our lawn and then there's like a part of our woods or the start of our woods here. And there's a lot of trees, a lot of different types of trees, black walnut, a couple apples, ash, some pine trees, some spruce, and a bunch of rocks, some huge rocks in here. And the plan is, uh, I want to fence off some of this wooded area in between our orchard and garden and put our chicken coop in here. And I want to build a coop and build our composting systems and just make it a huge chicken run. Give them a lot of space to run around and forage for their food. Find a lot of grubs, everything they eat naturally. Uh, and I'm through a lot of tops in here from the trees that we fell in the process to build a lot of our garden projects. I threw a lot of tops in this area and I want to give the chickens a lot of cover and a lot of place to uh, to hang out. But this is actually happening uh, pretty soon. I'm talking to our local uh, feed store and I'm, I'm getting the supplies and he gave me the number of a local uh, hatchery and he gave me a, a number of a local person who uh, has a lot of chicks for sale so I'm gonna see if that will work out. But yeah, in the next week or so, I should be getting some chicks uh, starting the clock and all that. Getting a coop up, getting this all fenced off, and getting some of this woods or some of this grass kind of mowed down. But onto the garden area. I'm gonna start off by showing you the tomatoes and this tomato trellis. So I built this trellis out of logs uh, from the ash trees that we fell, the clear space for the garden here. Um, there's actually no nails or screws or anything, just gravity holding this thing together. All these tomatoes are looking good that I planted. Uh, when I put them out, there was an unforecasted frost. It got down to a little bit over 33 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So it was a cold night and it was forecasted to be in like a low of 40 something. But that's just what happens in the north. Uh, all these guys made it though. It looked pretty rough for a couple days. I'm not gonna lie, I had to prune a lot of their leaves off, but it looked like it looks like they've came back strong. Uh, this rain for the past day and a half really helped them out, and I got this irrigation hooked up, so they should be sitting pretty. The next thing I want to show you is our hugel coulter. There was all these trees laying around that we fell the clear space for this garden. There's a lot of tops for the trees. We used the logs to build a lot of raised beds, and I'm going to be using the rest of the logs to build the chicken coop and some other projects like that. We always want to be using every part of the tree when we cut one down. And what we do with the smallest sticks and branches is we make kugel cultures out of them. So that's what I did with this. I made a huge pile of the tops of the trees. I lopped off all of the smallest branches and sticks and I piled them up here. I made a huge pile and I put a bunch of leaves and grass clippings on top and I did another layer of sticks and I put a bunch of soil on top. My cousin was able to come over and help me out with his tractor and he knocked it out in like 10 minutes it would have taken me a year of shoveling but but yeah i'm really happy with the way this turned out it's looking really good i'm gonna let this break down for a year maybe two i planted some uh sunflowers and a bunch of other flowers and a couple other seeds that we're not going to be that we wouldn't use in the garden so we'll see if anything or we'll see how everything does 
but the plan for now is just to let this sit and break down and start feeding the soil. Next to the hula culture, I have um, a bed I made out of logs for trees that we felled to clear space for our pole barn. Um, I took some logs off of those trees and I made a bed back here and I planted it with beans. I put it on the fence so we can they can just grow up this fence and use that as a trellis. But yeah, that's the north side of my garden area and now I'll get into the raised beds and I'll show you what I got growing. So first thing I should probably mention is this greenhouse. So I built this a couple weeks ago. Um, got the frame up and all the plastic on it. It's not completely done. I still have to build the beds on the inside and get it all planted. But I got most of it done and I'll be completely finishing it um, soon. That's actually the first thing on my to-do list. It's going to be a self-watering greenhouse. So it's a, it's a really steep A-frame and it's going to have gutters on each end to collect the rainwater. And I have some, uh, some rain barrel kits that I'm going to attach to holes in the gutter to feed the water back into the raised beds. Uh, so now we're getting to the raised beds area um, of my garden. I currently have 11 raised beds down here, all, all planted. I've actually gotten some spinach, arugula, and radish harvest. So these are all looking good. I have a huge pile of chips here, and I'm spreading chips uh, in between the raised beds, and I want to get this whole place filled with chips eventually. So that's what I've been doing in the past day or so, is getting all this. Everything spread, getting paper and cardboard and all the grass, and getting chips on top of everything. But yeah, that's my garden area. I built all of this in the past uh, two months, which is crazy. It seems like it's so much longer than that. Um, but it's come a really long way. This was literally just a lawn that we had here, and I put all these beds down here. Some of them I made a few years ago in our garden that we had, but I moved them all down here, refilled them, planted them. I built a lot of these beds with logs from the trees that we fell, filled them with soil, and now I have a huge pile of chips I'm spreading in between to get all of this grass covered with wood chips. And also, I should say, I have a plan right now to uh, use this uh, area in between the hugel and the raised beds. I want to get some in-ground beds going here. So this is where I want to put my zucchini, some cabbage, and anything else that needs some space and needs some room to spread out. I'm going to just keep expanding keep putting chips down, keep building raised beds. Uh, I'm gonna finish up the greenhouse, get that planted. I've got another greenhouse that I'm gonna be building in September, or at least that's the plans right now. Who knows, things change. But got a huge area fenced off, got a tarp down, and I have a lot of materials to build raised beds. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here in the next uh, coming months. At the end of the year, this place should be magnificent like it's gonna go from a lawn to a full-fledged food production area in one year less than a year so it's gonna be cool but that's it for the garden area I'll take you over to the blueberry patch All right, this is my blueberry patch. Uh, it's hard to see on camera, but there are 73 blueberry bushes in here. So this spot is a few hundred yards from our house through the woods, and it's a space that was always a clearing, um, or at least there aren't any trees growing here. And it's actually a clearing because this was next to the, uh, the place where my great-grandfather built his house when he bought this land in 1918. So they were homesteading up here. This hilltop's always just been cleared ever since. And I decided to turn this into a blueberry patch. Uh, we love blueberries. Blueberries grow well up here and we want food that can store easily and for a long time, which blueberries can do. I have a huge pile of wood chips um, down at the bottom of the hill here. They've been breaking down for a couple years and the plan is to get those spread on all these bushes. I want to get this whole area chipped eventually just so I don't have to uh, come back and mow it as often because I've spent a lot of time here mowing it since I've got a plant it just because of how vicious this brush and uh, grass is back here. So, but yeah, they all seem to be doing well. I'm really excited to see what this looks like in three years. So that's it for uh, my fruit and vegetable production areas of our property. That's usually where I end my tours, but today I'm gonna do a full tour and show you the rest of our land here. So everything I've done on this channel so far in my orchard, garden, blueberry patch, all that, it's all on a five acre chunk of land that uh, we had to zone to build our house. We live in a huge patch of woods and we own 200 acres. It's not all connected. Our house is on the front corner of 80 acres and we have three other 40 acre plots. 
we actually had this land because it used to be an old family farm. Uh, my great grandfather bought a huge chunk of these woods and uh, some fields down the road in 1918. And my family were uh, loggers, farmers, and they were homesteaders. My great grandfather uh, split up the land between all of his kids. As the years went by, some of those kids sold it and some of those kids held on to it and passed it on to their kids. I'm lucky enough to be part of the family that held on to this land and I want to hold on to this land for the next generation. So that's why I'm growing all this food. I want my family to know that they have food security as long as we have this land. But yeah, like I said, everything I've done so far has been on the front five acres and we have 195 acres that are, is pretty much devoted to growing trees and growing deer. And deer hunting is how I plan on harvesting all my meat for my family. Haven't really touched on it much, but it's a huge part of what I'm doing up here and I'll show you guys what our woods looks like. Alright guys, so that was a tour of some of the woods behind my house here. First place I went to with that uh, little stream in it, that's called our Plank Bridge 40. That one's kind of off on its own. I drove back, or I went back out, drove back uh, to a place we call Four Corners. And it's called Four Corners because four different 40s kind of meet at this point where I'm at. And two of the 40s that are kitty quarter from each other are ours. So that's the back two 40s that we own. I'll get some more footage and show you more. I'm gonna fly some drones over, especially in the fall, but it's just so thick in here right now, it's hard to get good footage of everything. Yeah, that's my story. I'm fourth generation to own this land. I wanna pass it on to the next generation and I wanna give them food security with these systems that I'm setting up. So if that's something you're interested in, follow along, I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Be good.